and welcome to Ujima Wednesdays. Uh, this week, or this month rather, is all about Black recreation, a term we're using to describe all the ways that we work, play, and find joy in our public and private spaces. Uh, today, we are discussing healing and plant medicine with Kijana Rose. Uh, and I'll just read your bio really quick. So Kijana Rose is the founder and CEO of INI Rose Garden. Everything about her lived experience has shaped her vision for her store at 22 Birch. Um, and, it, and a future sea to sail uh, ecosystem expansion. She brings a health and wellness emphasis to everything in the cannabis industry, integrating and emphasizing education and empowered consumerism into the product and experience design. She holds two degrees from Northeastern University, woo, including a master's in public health and is now a uh, practicing yoga teacher, trainer, and instructor. Her professional experience in corporate and nonprofit worlds has not only prepared her for success as an entrepreneur, but also for building a new breed of business that emphasizes inclusivity, sustainability, and equity in everything it creates. Um, welcome, Kijana. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sierra. Thank you all for inviting me to speak. I'm so honored to be able to share space with you. Thank you. And especially to discuss truly my favorite topic in the world, which is plant medicine and wellness. Um, yeah, so uh, I did create a visual document that I shared with you, Sierra, and I invite you to share it with um, the group. I don't know if people would have seen it or not, but if you at any time in this presentation have any questions or anything like that, please feel free to ask them. Um, and yeah, if, there, if you do see anything in the presentation that you have a question about, feel free to ask about that too. I won't really go off of that um, presentation. I'm, I'm more of like just a, a talker. <laughs> um, but yeah, at, like I said, anything that you have questions about, anything that I mentioned, please ask. Um, so I'll start just by like introducing myself. Uh, my name's Kijana, as Sierra mentioned, and all the other stuff that she mentioned, um, but I'll go a little bit deeper. I, um, I was raised as a Rastafarian. So my family, my mom and my dad, they both follow uh, Rastafarian culture. And from a really young time in my life, I've been exposed to cannabis and specifically as a plant medicine. Um, when I was really young, uh, I have, uh, mo most of my family lives in Jamaica. And when we go and visit them, there was cannabis growing everywhere in our, you know, home. Um, everyone used it around me. And, you know, if, if we had a stomach ache, my dad would boil leaves and make ganja tea for us. So honestly, I've been exposed to cannabis medicine since I was very, very young. Um, and, I always really understood the plant to be that medicine, although of course in American culture, it's been pretty taboo um, throughout most of my life. And then in 2015, cannabis became legal or, or it passed um, on the ballot that year and it became legal to consume recreational cannabis. Obviously medicinal cannabis had been around um, and it also became legal to grow cannabis in your home. And at that point, I started growing cannabis in my home because we could, and it was super exciting to be able to up until that point. Um, you know, anybody who <laughs> was a cannabis consumer had to pretty much acquire it through some somewhat shady, I don't want to say shady because, you know, drug dealers are my friends too, but, um, you know, definitely some methods that it's not what we're doing now, that's for sure. So, you know, um, it was really exciting to be able to grow cannabis in my home. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> uh, and it was just, it was a change. And at the time I was actually working as an executive director of a small family foundation here in Boston. And I was their first executive director. Um, I had worked for them just for about two months and I got fired actually. And when I got fired from that job, I was obviously, as, as we are when we get fired from jobs, pretty dazed and confused. And I, I remember thinking when I walked out of there uh, that day that if I couldn't make that job work, because in fact, the people that hired me came after me um, and it seemed like it was going to be this great fit. If I, I felt that if I couldn't make that work, then like, OK, I'm not meant to um, to work for people. And I was like, I'm never going to work for anyone else again. And it was 
right before marathon weekend. And I remember it being marathon weekend this past weekend because the job that I had been working for the foundation marathon weekend was a big time of programming for us. And I was really just trying to hang on until then, but I got fired right before it. And now that I could go away for marathon weekend, I decided to go to Toronto. And when I went to Toronto, I was like looking for things to do. I knew that cannabis had newly been legalized in Toronto and I was looking for things to do. And I saw this ganja yoga class and I was like, oh, this feels like my vibe because I, I was already a yoga instructor at that point, a yogi for about 10 years at that point, obviously a cannabis lover. I was like, this is going to be super cool. So I went to the class <clears throat> and it literally changed my life. I was so excited about what I was doing. It was actually a really funny experience. It was on Good Friday. And um, I remember walking into the class and it was me and one other guy at first. And he was like, oh, I invited some of my friends. They're not regulars though. And we all, they all came in. We were smoking cannabis in these bags. The teacher was telling us about it. And we started with this meditation. And it was a moving meditation, which I had never done before. And we're moving along and literally one by one, everybody in the room is going down except me and the other guy who was like a regular. And the class went on for like two hours. The teacher had like no care for time or anything. And I literally left there with like a smile ear to ear. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to share this experience with people. This is amazing. And I mean, for my like experience, of course, I had gone to yoga classes and like ripped a bowl in the car right before walking in or smoked a joint right before going. But this was absolutely the first time that I had these two things paired together so intentionally. And I, I loved the way that the teacher kind of explained the strains that he was offering. And he was using this volcano and he was like kind of telling us like, oh, I'm using a volcano tonight, but if you want to use other things, it just made it such an open space. And the biggest thing for me in that moment was like smoking cannabis with people that I had never met before. I'd never done that in my life before because most of us are up until that point, we're like really made to feel kind of criminal if we were like smoking weed, it was like this hush hush thing. So this was just like a totally new opening experience for me and it felt so healing. And like I said, I just walked out of there feeling like, oh my God, I've got to share this with people. And so I kind of came back home and I um, put together a class in my backyard, probably like a month, two months later after I'd been telling everybody about it for months, like, oh my God, I did this amazing thing. And I was like, all right, finally just do it. So I did it in my backyard. And I remember going into that experience thinking like, okay, yes, I took that class, but like, I want to share my cannabis experience with people because I felt like my experience with cannabis had been really unique, like having been around it my whole life and it always being presented to me as this medicine. And as it was becoming more legal, I was like, this is a great opportunity to educate people on all the different aspects of cannabis. So I invited people over for a ganja yoga class. And what I did was I took the strains that I was already growing. Um, I had just harvested them. So that's why I ended up waiting the two months because I was waiting to finish harvesting my plants. I really wanted to use my plants for the class. And I had just finished harvesting and we did our first class and I, I, um, I kind of curated the class based on the strains that I had. So when we started with sativas and we did fast flows and then we switched to a hybrid and we did balancing and then we switched to an indica and we did stretching on the floor. It was a very long class, by the way. I also couldn't have a care of time at that moment <laughs> channeling the other yogi, but yeah, like it was, it, it was just such a cool vibe. And I made lemon ginger shots for everybody after class. And I was um, making edibles for people because I wanted to teach people about Rastafarianism. I want, I made ITAL snacks for people. So like just ITAL food, ITAL way of living. That's a very um, important part of Rastafarian culture. And it, it's all about clean eating and really eating from the earth. And it's, it's vegan. And I actually wasn't even vegan at the time, but I just started making everything vegan because I felt like that was most close connected to the Rastafarianism and I was just using the platform to really educate people and after the first class everyone was kind of like yeah let's do it again and I just started doing it week after week and people really resonated with just the different kind of things that they were learning in the space and 
really kind of all the things that we were um, learning about the plants themselves and, and things that I was learning about the community because a lot of times I would listen to what people in the community were saying, like the ailments they were having, what they were going through, whether it was like physical, like pain or whether it was anxiety, social, that kind of thing. And I would curate the strains and, and talk about how those things can help kind of alleviate these issues. And so it really became a platform for um, education. And that was something that was so important to me really from day one. Um, I, I went to Northeastern, I got a master's at Northeastern, but I also worked at Northeastern for several years after um, I went to school there and I was in higher education and education is something that it's, it's definitely a way to connect with people and it's something that community can be built around as, as you guys know and understand, I'm sure. And um, it, it was something that this community was kind of building around. And that was really, really exciting for me. And, and I wanted to teach people so much about the plant, like the medicinal aspects of cannabis. Yes, of course. And just all the things that it could kind of um, connect to or relate to there, but also like the different consumption methods. So I started making edibles and I started making teas and really just showing people we were using a volcano vaporizer. So, um, you know, the volcano, it's like the OG vaporizer. It's been around since the seventies, but still a lot of people hadn't experienced that before. And I use that in yoga specifically because it's a much cleaner high than you would get when you're smoking a joint or a blunt, I say those things, they kind of give you feedback from the paper or the tobacco if you're using it. But when you smoke the volcano, it's very clean. So you can you can switch a couple strains throughout the class and you can expect that people are really gonna, they're gonna get the flavor of the terpenes. And then you're educating people about terpenes. You know, you can expect that people are gonna really get the effects of the, the cannabis as it's meant to be. And they can they can use it to enhance the practice. And so that was so exciting for me to you know be able to do and i also really was excited about the the biological information you know the terpenes and, and cbd versus thc I, I would go and get my weed tested so that i could tell people all the different components that were in the cannabis and and another thing that you know is so exciting about cannabis is that we in our bodies we have an endocannabinoid system so our bodies are actually built for a, a connection and a relationship with cannabis. And it was so exciting to finally be able to educate people about that. And, you know, for, for those of us who are just learning about cannabis right now, we have an endocannabinoid system. We have CB1 and CB2 receptors that are perfectly suited to, um, you know, work with the cannabinoids that exist within the cannabis plant. And that is just something that's really exciting. And there's, there's so many opportunities for cannabis and research and information, things that, you know, we still don't know in cannabis, but these are the things that, you know, get me really excited and that I was just super excited to start sharing with people. And I really um, use the first part, the first kind of couple years of building my business to figure out like all these different things that I could share with people. I started doing grow classes and cooking classes and different meditations and things like that because I really started to just connect with all the different ways that cannabis A can be used and all the different ways that it can enhance life. Like, you know, I, I'll admit I'm someone who's been like smoking all the time, probably since college. And, you know, we used to joke around and be like, yeah, I'm a functional high, but honestly, cannabis actually is meant to be used for so many different parts of life. It's like, there's, there's so many, you know, you should be able to be a, we should, we should all be functional highs. And if you're using the right strain and if you're ingesting it in the ways that are really best suited for you, then everybody has like something that they can get out of this plant. And it doesn't just have to be smoked. That's like another, I think, really exciting thing is like, and especially now there's just so many ways of ingestion that are coming up. So yeah, there's millions of opportunities for research within the industry and, and healing. There's also so much opportunity for um, equity and, and building generational wealth in this industry. And I really, um, I think I find that to be such an important part of the kind of cannabis discussion because there are so many plant opportunities, there are so many medicinal opportunities, but there are also all these economic opportunities as well. Um, I really feel like there's so much connection to Black culture 
and cannabis with black culture and cannabis. And, you know, I'm super excited. I'll, I'll go a little bit more into kind of what my business is now and, and where it's at now in a second. But like, I do feel like there's so many, um, there's so much opportunity within the industry. Like right now, you know, I don't know how familiar people here are, but if you go into a dispensary and you buy weed, it's still being sold as like an eighth or a quarter. And like, that's kind of hilarious because that's how we buy it on the street, you know? And that's exactly what translated over into the, the um, legal industry. And there's a lot of other ways to think about cannabis, you know, in Jamaica, you buy it right on the right on the the, um, the stem, and that's how you purchase it. And it's you know I can't wait till the days where you're going into stores and you're seeing cannabis hanging from the stores, and you're just like picking out the buds that look best to you. But we haven't quite gotten there as a culture yet. We're still like a little bit limited to the way you know the the hidden kind of taboo side of cannabis. But the more that we we talk about cannabis, and the more that we kind of learn to to understand all these different aspects of it like I said there's something for everyone with the plant and even if you're not a user like you can be an investor in this in this industry you can still be you can still participate in the industry there's still like a lot of opportunities there's a lot of uh, of, a lot of verticals to the industry that I I just wanted to touch base on really quickly and and there it's ever growing but there's there's three main verticals right now and then one kind of ancillary one so the 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 first vertical would be cultivation right you can come in there's there's a huge opportunities within the industry of cultivation growing cannabis indoor and outdoor then there's product manufacturing which is part of what I do which is taking plant and turning it into something else, whether that is an edible or a different, you know, like a vape product or the the many other consumption methods that are coming up. There's lozenges, there's patches, there's, you know, sprays, there's tinctures, there's literally hundreds of um, consumption methods that are coming up, which I think is so amazing. And then there's retail, which is like going into a store and buying cannabis at a dispensary. There's another uh, part of the industry, which is testing, which is, which is very important and, and very big. There's also um, delivery, which is coming kind of on board in Massachusetts right now. And then there's other verticals that are coming up like social consumption, which is something that I'm personally really excited about because that's kind of what my um, Ganja Yoga format is. It's a social consumption format where people are actually coming to a site and they're consuming cannabis on site. In the meantime, while social consumption is kind of getting there, I am also in the process of opening a a vegan cannabis bakery here in Roslindale. I grew up in Roslindale up here now, and I'm opening up a bakery in Roslindale Square, and it's going to have vegan edibles, but it's also going to be an apothecary. So one thing that, you know, I wanted to do really different was, to be honest with you, I personally never was interested in having a retail shop. That's not really been my um, like shtick. But when we found this space, it was such a great space that it it made so much sense to have some type of retail in there. And I really wanted to create an experience because that's what I, that's, that's what I do. You know, I like to create experiences, but I, I hope that as the industry grows, it will be more experiential. You know, I hope that we will continue to kind of coalesce around the plant and, and learn from each other and, and cultivate community around the plant. But what I wanted to do was to also continue to educate people, not just about cannabis, because it's such an important herb, but about the, the, the herb kingdom, you know, because there are so many herbs and they work well together. You know, that's the earth is such an amazing thing and it's all like by design. And there's so many amazing herbs. You guys were talking about lavender earlier. Lavender is one of my favorite herbs to use but it's also one of my favorite herbs to pair with cannabis. And I, I pair it with specific strains or when I'm in specific moods, if I need specific things or if other people in my community come to me and they tell me they're looking for certain things, I will think about different herbs, you know, skullcap for anxiety and chamomile for relaxation, all these different things that you can also pair with cannabis that complement the cannabis, complement the um, different cannabinoids within the plant, complement the different terpenes within the plant and also enhance the healing of the plant. And so when you come into our store at 22 Birch, it's gonna be a vegan bakery as well as an apothecary. So we're gonna sit down, we wanna have a conversation with you, talk to you about why you wanna use the plant. And then we'll make recommendations as to herbal blends that you could do based on what you're kind of saying to us. I love astrology. So if you wanna come in and do a a chart reading and we'll make 
recommendations based off of your astrology chart. Or if you want to do a tarot card reading, we'll do a tarot card reading with you and make recommendations based off that. You know, really just bringing in the things that I love and the things that have like really helped me build this community and creating this experience in the store. So yes, technically by law, yes, it is a dispensary, but really it's a bakery and an apothecary, you know, um, they don't have those classifications <laughs> for cannabis yet. Hopefully one day they'll have those types of things. But yeah, so that's kind of um, about where we are right now. Let me just see if there's anything else. That was really most of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. You know, um, I, I just wanted to reiterate how much I think there is an opportunity with cannabis as a plant, as medicine, as an opportunity for healing, but also to create generational wealth. You know, a big part of our mission um, at, at my company, The Garden, is to, is to create generational wealth, specifically for people of color, understanding that, you know, this industry, we belong in this industry in a, in a big way. And so we've got to kind of come in and that there's like room for everybody. You know, there's so many ways, so many opportunities for growth within the industry. So yeah, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, based off of literally anything that I said, whether it's the science of it, if you want to talk cannabis history, if you want to talk about business or plant medicine, yoga, meditation, anything, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kijana. This is so exciting. Um, so we do have one question in the chat. Um, and please, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or just jump in the chat really quick. Um, when will the space be open in Rondondale? Hopefully soon. It is a process. <laughs> um, we've been in the process since about December 2020, just to give you some context. Um, we're getting two licenses, like I said, product manufacturing and retail. Our product manufacturing license, we expect to have complete in June. And so you'll actually start seeing our products in the dispensaries first. We'll have a very small product line, just two products, cookies and fudge in the dispensaries. And then the store, we're hoping to be open by the fall. So you'll be able to book an appointment or we'll have takeout. So please stay tuned. You know, it's all just prayers, but I'm thinking we're there. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And I would love to hear a little bit more about, oh, did somebody just shout on mute? Okay, no. I would love to hear more about, you know, cannabis history. This uh, month is all about Black recreation and the ways that we gather together um, and participate in culture. Um, and this is such a huge culture that has been um, marginalized for such a long time. I mean, you know, there. I'm sure that some people know the history and why it's marginalized in America as well as Jamaica, but I'd love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I mean, Jamaica is definitely a whole other issue and situation that, whew, girl, I can go in. But in America, I will say that, you know, cannabis was really popularized, especially, so like cannabis as a plant medicine ha has actually been around for hundreds of years, like at least since the 1800s. And the American government has been doing research on cannabis for a very long time. They, they know a lot of information about cannabis and it was widely used as a medicine pre-prohibition. So pre about 1920-ish, right? Pre then it was, you could go into a pharmacy and buy a tincture, all types of cannabis medicine was available. And then when, especially when the Mexican revolution happened and Mexicans started to migrate to America. So this was like the late fifties, I wanna say sixties, we're getting into the seventies. Mexicans smoked cannabis. That's when smoking cannabis became more popular. And that's where we also started to get the terminology marijuana because that's what Mexicans refer to cannabis as. And so that's why you see a lot of the laws that came out at that time, they were it's still to this day, you see marijuana, marijuana, marijuana written in every law because it was really coming out. Prohibition was really a response to that kind of popularization of smoking cannabis that was happening, again, specifically by Mexican immigrants coming into this country. And there was a lot of kind of fear mongering that happened within the US government. There's a couple specific characters who really went in and started to create campaigns that um, presented marijuana cannabis i don't like to call marijuana cannabis as the same type of drug as heroin and cocaine and other you know really um strong opioids and and opioid use was also on the rise at that time and so because of 
you know, a little bit of racism, a little bit of prejudice and a little, and a, and a lot of just misclassification. Cannabis got looped into this kind of class one drug and the war on drugs. When that happened, it specifically went for cannabis. And at that time too, a big part of the medical community started to come out and say like, no, this is wrong. In fact, cannabis prohibition probably would have happened 20 or 30 years sooner if the medical community hadn't been so vocal in saying, no, 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 no. We've been using cannabis as a medicine, blah, blah, blah. The government effectively shut down cannabis as a medicine when it scheduled cannabis as a class one drug. It took it off the table. You couldn't even research it anymore. For also years, the government, the United States government has grown cannabis at the University of Mississippi that they've researched and that they even used for the first medical marijuana programs in the country. At first in the early, late eighties, early nineties, you could only get cannabis through the United States government if you needed medicinal cannabis. But again, you know, because they have not been uh, cannabis friendly, they haven't been necessarily open to cannabis as a crop. And there's also a lot of issues with hemp kind of taking over in the, the um, big agriculture. We haven't been able to get access to cannabis, like proper cannabis research and information for so long. And so it really is the power of the people that has brought cannabis to the point that it's at right now. It's because of advocates, a, a lot of them medicinal advocates, but from the medicinal movement came the recreational movement. So that's really kind of how prohibition and cannabis history has like unfolded. That was a very quick version, by the way, the, the quick notes version, if you will. But, you know, there's a lot of stigma associated with cannabis and it really has always been tied up in that and in prejudice and in racism. And that's what's so unfortunate um, about why it's taken so long to get to where we are now. And it's, it's a big part of the reason why there's so much we don't know yet about cannabis and it, about what it can do. Wow, thank you for that synopsis. I see Claudia has her hand raised, so I'm going to open up the floor for Claudia. Hi, um, thank you so much for this. There's like so many different threads in what you were discussing that are just like so impactful on so many levels um but I'm really curious about like one I just think the story is so like beautiful and just like the fact that you were like left something and then like your entire like it sounds like your entire world just like all came together and was like oh this is where I need to be which is we have those moments, but the fact that like you acted on it and here you are right now, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> and, like, it, um, it really did happen like that. That was the universe, you know? It's wild. Um, but I'm really curious about like sort of, uh, you, were you were discussing a little bit about like how there's not that much research and just sort of like, how are you envisioning that sort of shifting or just kind of like what kind of like community work can be done like when, once you sort of like get established you get like people that are like returning and sort of like how you can sort of document their experience and and just sort of yeah be able to have this like archive of just sort of people's like relationship to um to cannabis and like their holistic care yeah, ex exactly like what you said, like really using our community to guide us and to help us understand the plant more. That's kind of the approach that I feel like I've taken since day one and that my team and I really like have incorporated into the business because the thing is like there's so everybody, as I was explaining to you, right, we have an endocannabinoid system. So like my endocannabinoid system looks different from your endocannabinoid system. So we're going to react to maybe even the same strain in a completely different way. It's, it's very possible. And so the more that we understand about ourselves and this plant, you know, the more that we can really get into it and get on a deeper level of healing and understanding and also just like exciting 
things that are coming up because it's a really cool plant. Like I like to just sometimes sit and geek out. The plant is amazing. It's truly incredible. Like I like to tell people like cannabis has actually been around for millions of years on this planet and we haven't been around that long. So like, of course we have an endocannabinoid system in our body because we are made up of things that are on this earth. You know what I mean? Like it's, we're all connected and that's, it's just one of those things that shows us that we're all connected. So that is definitely one way. I will also say that there was another bill that was recently passed that has like really opened up the opportunities for cannabis research. It's not quite federal legalization. It's kind of the precursor to federal legalization, which which is up right now. It's definitely being talked about. Something just passed in the House, the MORE Act, which is the big kind of legalization act right now. It just passed in the House. So research is gonna come and and we're going to start learning so much. For me personally, the things that I'm most excited about are really with like the edibles because I have just like come to, people will, um, ever since I started the, the business, people will write, they'll email me, tell me about their experience with an edible, things like that. So it's like, you start to kind of collect information and data and you just realize like, There's just so much opportunity here, especially with edibles, because it's understandable and fair that smoking makes some people uncomfortable, but with the edibles, like it, it has, you know, there are people who have have come to me and been like, I I would have never used cannabis if this wasn't, you know, the way that I could ingest it. And I also love creating good tasting treats. I have a friend, like, um, one of my old, old former friend, like, we had completely different profiles in terms of like what would what would calm us down or what so like whatever she was into it would just like drive me absolutely bonkers I would be like itching to get out of my skin I could feel like everything in the way yeah yeah and I'd be like it would it would be those moments where you're like how do I get home from here like I can't picture the journey home you know um, and then I have strains that I like, right. And that don't do that for me at all. I'm just like envisioning this like personality quiz kind of like, yes, like, like, this is what I'm like, and this is like, you know, like, like I think yeah. in this type of situation or whatever. Yeah. Yes. I love that. No, we're going to have all that stuff. So definitely stay tuned. I love it. So mm-hmm. exciting. Abby, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Thank you so much. This has been really, really cool to listen to it. I'm super excited to come visit you at your shop. Um, but I was curious to hear a little bit more about your journey into herbalism and just like kind of what that was like and maybe to direct it a little bit more. What are some like top five herbs that you recommend everyone? Sure, I love that question. Um, yes, I love it. So my journey into like herbalism, it definitely came with this cannabis journey. Um, I really wanted to, like I said earlier, teach people all the different ways that you can consume cannabis. And as I mentioned, when I was young, my dad used to like boil ganja tea and, um, that was just like a common happening. And it wasn't just my dad, honestly, all the parents did it, but you know, it was in the mountains, but yeah, like I just, and my dad is like a big herbalist, Rastafarianism, he grows herbs and he's always making tonics and all types of stuff. And I never like paid as much attention to it until I really started to get into weed. And I, it's like amazing. I mean, there are just hundreds and hundreds of herbs and they are so powerful and they are so effective and they're just so interesting and they smell good and they're pretty and yeah they make us feel good I mean it was amazing to find out all the herbs that also have different uh cannabinoids in them but also that just have different euphoric effects and then start pairing them with cannabis and like feeling that I was like whoa this is this is crazy we're in a crazy time right now not really because this is ancient practices <laughs> by the way or really just bringing it back but it was really getting into the tea blending that I started to like research herbs and really get into it and that has just continued to be super fun for me at one point um, before I decided to like go legit I was I was putting out menus every week and I had these things called bloom boxes and I also had a blend box which will come back but it was like every month you would get a different, you would get two different tea blends. One of them was a smokable tea blend. So you could also smoke it or you could drink it. And I would teach people about herbs. So I just really love the herbs. 
but uh, top five herbs. Um, okay, so lavender, definitely, right? Super calming, um, just smells and tastes amazing. Rose, I have to say it's my last name. I mean, rose, it's an anti-stringent, it's, it's, it's super cleansing and it just, again, it's one of those feel good. It's, it's a ruled by Venus herbs. Uh, so of course I have to love it. Lavender is ruled by the moon. Now, some other herbs that I love. Kava root is awesome. It's another like feel good herb. You can make kava tea. You could smoke kava. You can smoke it with your cannabis. It's just like a euphoric vibe. Skull cap. Oh my God, get you some skull cap, everybody. It's an anti-anxiety herb. It will literally just help that melt away. I love to pair it with lavender. I would say a springtime herb, a must have is nettle because you want the antihistamines. It helps with the allergies and things like that. Ginger, I mean, I know it's a root, um, but I use it a lot in teas and things like that. And, you know, got that spice. I love it. Um, and I think I named more than five, but I'll just give you one more, which is Tulsi or holy basil. They call it. It's an amazing tasting herb. It's in that, um, you know, mint basil family. And it's just another one that is really good. I love it for, um, focus and for also like um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like it helps you kind of clean out your blood. It's just, it's a great, great herb. So it's my herbs. Thank you for asking that question. Of course, that was so cool to hear. Thank you. Hi, Kijana. Yes. <laughs> Fiona, nice to Hi. meet you. I'm sorry, I'm late. Um, I'm so curious, the herbs that you mentioned, um, are any of those kind of infused with other cannabis, either products or, you know, is that just kind of something you do, like mix lavender with a certain kind of, um, yeah. <laughs> so that I know of, not really, but okay. we will be able to get them at my store in, <laughs> you know, pre-roll form and in tea form. We'll definitely have teas in the store. And mm. like I said, we'll be an apothecary. So we'll have all types of herbs right there in the store. We'll be blending stuff right on the spot. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have time for two more questions. If anybody has any, just take a beat and wait for y'all to process a little bit. I think. No, um, maybe it's not like um, a nice question, so feel free to decline, but would you, would you say you would like cross promote other, um, you know, businesses in the area that sell, um, you know, specific, um, similar products like, cannabis. yeah, either specifically oh. cannabis. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, please I think I'm, it. I'm just thinking of, um, I stumbled across one up in Chelsea, um, in the middle of like nowhere near the salt mounds of Chelsea. Um, and I forget the name of it, but, um, you know, would you recommend people go to like one versus another store? Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's not one store over another that I would okay. recommend. I always throw out Pure Oasis because it's a black owned um, dispensary and it's, it's probably one of the only in the state. Um, but, you know, I definitely love <laughs> other dispensaries. I'm big on cross promotion. I have such kind of a niche product and also my products will be in the dispensary. So I, I definitely hope to have some oh, friends. Cool. Yeah. So you'll be able to get our products in the dispensaries too. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that there are some that I know like are, are doing, you know, some cooler things. Um, although I, I know there's one, the one that I've been to the most is actually up in the Linway and it's called Apotheca maybe. And they're really nice there. I, I generally like a good vibe. Like if you've got a good vibe and the bud tenders are <laughs> knowledgeable they kind of know what they're talking about I love that 
so yeah, Pure Oasis has been, that's probably one of the only ones I have to be honest. I don't hit the dispensary that often, but <laughs> <laughs> I do like Pure Oasis. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. And also I'll just say there's another one in Jamaica Plain. I think it's called Seed and they have like a museum in there. That's kind of cool. What? Wow. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool vibe. Check it out. I think I found the website for Pure Oasis. So okay, I'll put perfect. it in the chat. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and I guess, oh, sorry. Were you going to say something, Sienna? Did you have another no. question? Okay, thank I'm you. I'm just going to look up Seed. <laughs> Amazing. Um, you know, I'm interested in like what you talked about with the endocannabinoid uh, system and how that might be affected by like cannabis and also by like other herbs. Um, if you could like do like a light explanation, I know that these are super heady biological topics, but. You know, just like as a quick uh, overview, basically cannabis interacts with our nervous system through our endocannabinoid system, through the CB1, CB2 receptors. So we have these receptors in our body throughout our brain and then some throughout our body that cannabis, the, the cannabinoids in cannabis, they come in and they latch right onto our CB1, CB2 receptors. So this like CBD is a cannabinoid. There, there are so many um, cannabinoids within cannabis. The most we know about, like the most common ones that we know about are THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, and CBD, which is cannabidiol. And those, like we think of THC as the psychoactive drug, and we think of CBD as the non-psychoactive drug. But there's also CBG, which is like actually the mother cannabinoid, like in cannabis, the plant itself, at first, everything is CBG. And then as the plant matures, it starts turning into other things. So it turns into CBD, it turns into THC. Some CBG stays. There's THCV, which they call like the anti-suppressant um, cannabinoid. And so people are trying to do more research on that. And you know they, it's it's more common in sativa. So a lot of times we'll hear like people say sativas help them suppress their appetite. Then you have like CBN, for example, which is getting really popular as like the um, cannabinoid that helps the best with sleep. Um, and you know there's there's uh, I'm trying to think of some. There's there's also THC and there's THCA. So like everything is THCA or CBDA. The A stands for acid at first and then it gets heated and then it becomes the active cannabinoid. So heat is really required to activate cannabis um, so that you can get all the effects of the plant. And yeah, I hope that kind of helped you a little bit, but that's just like a general overview. But in terms of the actual science of how the CB1 receptors and the CB2 receptors work, it gets very, very specific, even with CBD and THC. And another thing about THC and CBD is that they, they work together, those two, um, those two components, they work very well together. So if you are consuming them at the same time, you're going to get a different effect than you would get if you were just consuming a THC isolate or if you were just consuming a CBD isolate. One thing I will say just about my own products is the way that we infuse our cannabis oil, for example, we don't isolate anything. It, we just take the full infusion of the plant. So it will have CBG in it, it will have CBN in it, it will have THCV if those things were already present in the plant. A lot of times when you go to the dispensaries and you get edibles, those are THC isolates or CBD isolates. So they've actually isolated the THC so it's only THC that's going to be in the plant. So my edibles are going to affect you a little bit differently than those other edibles would. Thank you so much, Kijana. I have one more question, or maybe it's two. So okay. first question, in terms of freedom dreams and policy change, what is your freedom dream for Black Earth Creation, healing plants, and inter inter intergenerational gathering in Boston? Mm, that's such a beautiful question. Um, a, that it would just happen, <laughs> that it was just possible. Um, I really wish that 
people, black people would get involved in ownership uh, within the cannabis industry. I really wish that they would see the unique offerings that they can bring to the industry and bring them because the industry is boring right now. It needs diversity. It needs more. It needs, it needs what we've been doing underground to come up above ground, you know, um, because I've been around, you know, black people smoking cannabis for a long time. And it's just such a vibe, all the different ways that I've seen it be used, the, the community that I've seen it, you know, come together, coalesce around it. It's really dope. So my hope is just that space continues to open up so that they, you know, that we can continue to find ownership within the city. And a big part of that is really going to be the way that, you know, regulation and, and the way that the process is working right now. It, it's a really hard process. There are some parts of it that I literally say, like, I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. It's, it, it can be so painful going through it. And it's so confusing sometimes, um, all the bureaucracy of it. Uh, it, it's really hard. So I, I do hope that, you know, that people continue to just advocate that we, we continue to get spaces to use our voice and that we continue to use it so that um, ownership can really come in the industry. Mm, period. Um, and then my last question, uh, in our last two minutes, um, Y'all, we have like two minutes left. So if you have any last minute questions or burning desires to hear from Kijana about, drop it in the chat. Um, where can we find you? Like what is coming up next? Where can we find you? Please drop all your socials, your website, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. So definitely check us out on Instagram. It's at I-A-N-D-I Rose Garden, one word, um, I and I Rose Garden. Um, just so you guys know, I and I, that's like a super, uh, it's a Jamaican Rastafarian kind of vibe. It means like we are one. Like my dad used to say that to me all the time. I and I, or he, he actually would call me I. Um, but it just basically means like, I am you, you are me. We're, we're one, you know, I and I, you're I, I'm I. Um, so that's, that's the vibe. And yeah, so check us out on Instagram. Um, we do have a website though. We're working on updating it. Um, and, and our stores at 22 Bird Street in Roslindale, please like stay tuned. We'll definitely, you'll definitely see us in the dispensaries. Um, like I said, this summer, you'll see us in the dispensary. So check out your local dispensary and yeah, come visit us in Roslindale this fall for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so well, much. You guys. So that about just wraps us up. Um, we're all going to say goodbye to YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you, Kajana, once more for um, presenting for our Black Recreation Month. Uh, I'll stop the recording now.